people this is activity number two in lab number five a sample problem for the midterm that you will be getting on the 11th of february now saturday 11th uh, 11th of february now uh there are many ways of doing this problem it's a finite element uh, problem and notice it says use all planes of symmetry if any and then use the most appropriate element needless to say that when you see something like that you should and it's already B. You should be using beam elements. Okay? There's going to be a major point deduction if you actually use solid elements. Okay? Uh, now, uh, the other thing is that uh, when, you, when you look at the problem, these ends are clamped. These ends are clamped. And over here, the problem says, the statement of the problem says, which is further up the, further up the, uh, this this slide it says that you take this middle point and pull it down by a thousandth of an inch and you apply a twisting moment so that it actually twists this rod by two degrees okay and then you have to find out how much twisting moment is needed in order to do that in other words as part of the problem that you have to answer you must say how much moment is needed okay now when it comes to geometry half of this is going to be good enough you should not use the whole thing you're going to be using uh, losing points if you do that so you make half of this geometry and then do the problem from that point on when you do half of the geometry over here there are symmetry constraints okay for example if you look at it at this point where uh, basically we have the beam stopping this is in the symmetry plane xz you can see that xz plane therefore there will be no translation in y symmetry means that this point doesn't go to the left or doesn't go to the right so no translation is y in y and rotations that exactly up are opposite in other words there's no translation in y there's no rotation about z and there's no rotation about x for symmetry purposes okay all right uh good so what i'm going to do instead of putting all these points in there and then cutting it i'm going to do a b c d and then this middle point okay and there are many ways of doing it what i'm going to do is using the wireframe in other words i create four points one two three four five points connect them with a line and then i will join the lines these five lines mesh it and then apply property on it. the properties the the this uh, the cross section is circle for all of them except that the radii of the circles are different and i cannot remember actually what the radius where it says uh uh let's see now it's kind of hard to read here uh it says uh somebody should say what the oh yeah right here radius 0.4 and radius 0.15 actually it was in this in this drawing all right let's go ahead and do that so we're going to go to katia uh, immediately I'm going to save it in the in the uh, folder that I have for this purpose so file save management save as in that folder which is uh, lab 5 activity 2 I'm going to save it there and I'm going to start putting the coordinates the coordinates as I said I'm going to use a b c d and then this middle point that I'm going to create so uh, let's see now uh, point right there now you can do that in uh, you can do that in uh, part design or you can do it in wireframe and surface design or generative shape design uh, not generative shape design the uh, yeah generative shape design that's correct uh, but uh, at some point you have to go there because you have to join these curves okay so I'm going to do that right here let's start point uh, this is point one uh, okay, so coordinates of point one. Uh, let's see now. What do you have here? A. Point A is 0 minus 10, 10. 0 minus 10. Sorry, 0 minus 10, 0. That's the first point. 
the next one b is 0 minus 5 and 0 zero inches the next point c is 5 minus 5 and 0 and the last point the point d is 5 minus 5 and minus 10 minus 10 and that middle point that middle point has coordinates uh, 5 0 minus 10 5 0 minus 10 and say okay and then cancel so we have a, a, our point sum right here a b c d and this is the middle point that i created so let's let's draw the lines now so a line from here to here okay and from here to here as i as i said there are many different ways of doing these this problem you can do it with a sketch i'm doing it with wireframe in space good and cancel excellent now let's make sure that we hide these points because these points their sole purpose actually was to uh was to uh, uh create these lines okay now uh, i'm going to join this okay so in order to join you have two choices you can go to start mechanical design and wireframe and surface design that's where joining can be done and the more sophisticated version of that this particular workbench for surfacing and things like that is called is called uh, what is that uh, start uh, shape design right generative generative shape design i'll go to wireframe wireframe and surface design because this is a very simple problem and you, you look for the join uh, uh, icon which is right here it looks like that see that join you select this and that and that and that now uh the reason i did this join is that i want to mesh this thing in one shot mesh it in one shot okay and when i join it then i don't have to individually uh, mesh these things uh, and i don't because if you individually mesh these things at these corner points there will be some duplicate duplicate note nodes and somehow you have to do something about it but when you join it it just meshes the whole thing there is no ambiguity at these corner points they're all uh, you know identical node from the left and from the right is that same same node now let's apply material on this thing i think this was out of made out of steel if i'm not mistaken let's see uh steel default properties yep all right so metal steel on that part good and we are done here so let's save this thing notice that the cross section for all of these is circular therefore we don't need an orientation point so we go to generative uh what is that uh, a generative structure analysis it's a static analysis nothing fancy is going to do you have to do the machine yourself right there so here because i joined them when i select this the entire thing is going to be meshed i don't know we have we know that these are about 10 years make everything uh, maybe uh, I don't know, half an inch, 0.5 inches. That's, that's, these elements are very robust, but linear. So you don't need too many of them. In fact, right click mesh visualization. If you put the cursor, you see that these are all, and let me zoom into this corner. So notice that when you go from the left, let me rotate this so that you can see it. Oops, maybe. This is, when you go from the left, it's node four. When you go from the right, it's also node four. That's because it was joined, okay? Good. Now, uh, we're gonna put, uh, uh, we're gonna put, uh, let me deactivate this first. Good. We're gonna put 1D property. The support is that join. Uh, let's select the, uh, we can select the join. Let me do it from here because I want to show you what can be done. Everything is done at the same time instead of doing it one by one. Okay. And you 
cylindrical click on it notice that for now i'm going to say they all have a radius of uh, uh, what is that uh, 0.4 so it's going to be 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.4 point. i know that these are not 0.4 i know that it's uh, 0.15 but for now let me say 0 0.4 0 0.4 they're all 0.4 Uh, my uh, yeah okay so let's go to Katia uh, point four say okay notice that what they did it put a circle of radius point four for all of them including these that I don't want but it's possible to change these two and I show you how we say okay if you go to the properties that was generated here this is right now it's for all four pieces you right click it says local 1d property so you can go to individual lines and change it to whatever you want you click on it you go to this line you make it 0.15 and then you go to the other line also make it 0.15 it's already 0.15 and say okay so what happened is that although you put radius of 0.4 for all four to begin with later on basically you, we went and did an override of uh, those 0.4s there are other ways of doing it for example you can put uh, to begin with 0.4 here 0.4 here 0.15 0.15 it is possible uh but uh, it's possible so i'll let you if you want experiment with it now these things i don't want to just hide it uh, oh, cancel cancel i just want to hide it cancel i just want to hide the properties i don't want to see them now uh, this end is clamped so where is the clamp right here this end is clamped this is a plane of symmetry this point lies in the plane of symmetry so you go to user define and you know that it's in the XZ plane of symmetry. So that thing does not move in the direction Y. Direction two. Rotations are opposite. So anything that is not checked here is going to be checked for rotation. This is a symmetry plane, symmetry consideration. Very good. Now, I want to take this point and I want to push it down by some amount. So first, I have to make it zero and then i want to take this point and give it a rotation so first i have to give it a zero rotation about the y-axis and a downward location you can do that separately if you want or you can do it both at the same time so let me do that at the same time so you click on it let me uncheck these things this point this point i want to push it down so i make it zero first and I want to give it a twist angle of two degrees, and that is rotation about y. I make it zero, and I can change that. You can do these things twice one for displacement, one for rotation, whatever you want. And, uh, uh, and in fact, it, you may fall, find that better because uh, later on, when you find the torque, it's less confusing. But I'll let, let you play with it. Say okay and now we can go and do enforce displacement right here and on this thing that we just did this restraint that we just did i can select it from the tree by the way this last one is what we just did a minute ago you click on it notice that the two things that can oops this was rotation about direction three i wanted to be two cancel that let's go back to that one more time uh translation in direct direction three and rotation about two that that's correct yeah that's correct that was correct so click on it and uh this thing that we just did oh yeah that's that was good that was good so it's a downward displacement of 0 0.001 inch and two degree rotation about the y-axis Okay, so, all right, good. So let's go and save the analysis, file, save management, uh, analysis, save as in that folder. This is lab five, activity two. 
to the default name. Okay, now we're going to run it. Always pray. Nothing fancy is going to happen. Finished. So this should go down. It should not go to the left or to the right at this point because it's on plane asymmetry. We know that much. Okay. So uh, uh, you can check it. Okay. But obviously, because it's a three dimensional object, when you do that, it also, you know, uh, move in other direction because this is a this is a frame structure basically so if you look at the front view let's look at the front view it will not go to the left or to the right it will not if you animate it it will not go to the left or to the right you can see that however of course because it's three-dimensional it can go off the plane because you actually twisted it you know you twisted it so it does go off the plane so we say okay now if you want to look at the displacement Nothing fancy. Let's go to average ISO. There we are. Okay. Now, the final thing that you need to do is to tell me how much force, how much torque was needed in order to twist this thing by two degrees. And you know how that thing works. You go to properties, right click, create resultant sensor, reaction sensor, and you select this last constraint where you applied your your, uh, uh, you know, uh, zero displacement in the vertical direction and zero rotation, and then you change it. And then you say update. When you update, you're going to get forces and moments. So you need 24 inch, 24 pounds to push it down. And moment, you need that much, uh, that much about the, I have to apply that much of a torque about the, uh, y-axis, which is 0.5 newton meter. You can change this unit so that it's pound by inch. So as a matter of fact, let me go that, go and change it. So we say, okay, let's go and change the, the, the torque uh, or moment, actually. Tools, options. Uh, let's see now. Where is this? Uh, units. Units, uh, let's see, moment. Can we make this alphabetical? Moments, let's see if we can find it. Moment, moment right there. Newton meter, I want to change that thing to pound inch, pound force by inch. You say okay, then let's go check it out. Double click on it and 24 pounds down and almost five pound force inch about the y axis. So the answer that you write in your exam booklet is not this number. You need double of that, double of that. So almost, almost 10 pound force inch in that box. If I ask for the force, it's not this. You double this value. Otherwise there will be point deductions. I think that uh, that does it. That takes care of activity number two. Please note that this geometry that I generated, there are other ways of doing it. I did it like that. I leave it to you to practice and be prepared for the test on Saturday, the 11th of February.